Laura, oh, Laura, in those circumstances, first of all, our respect and admiration to you. How do you keep going? You're telling the caller, keep going. Mm -hmm. How do you keep going? You have to. I mean, it's literally you and the caller on the other end of the line. And I think if if we give up, then there's, there's nobody there to help them. So you've just got to keep going and, you know, give them the, the advice that they need and make sure that you're there to listen to help them as mm -hmm. best as you can. To anybody who thinks that they're getting through to some sort of call centre there, what sort of training is involved in that job for you? So you do six weeks um, in a classroom training, learning all the procedures and the protocols and things. And then you, you sit with a, a mentor, you know, and you, you mm. take the calls with somebody next to you. And then you, you fly in solo after that. I mean, we saw a colleague there, because you were obviously yeah. feeling upset. Um, it must be hard to leave that behind when you go home. I mean, yeah. you've got two small children, yeah. small children. How do you separate those two things? I mean, are there calls that stay with you and, and stick in your mind? Yeah, I mean, definitely. You take a call and, you know, they say to, to think about it while you're at work and, and not take mm. it home, but we wouldn't be human if we didn't go home and think about what we'd done today or who we'd spoke to. And... Mm. But when you think about why you actually became a call handler, mm -hmm. What was your motivation? What inspired you? Um, so, me and my sister lost my mum when we was 12 years old. It was a traumatic experience. Um, she had a, an internal hemorrhage in, in front of us, so we tried to do CPR and unfortunately she passed away. How old were you then? 12, oh. yeah. Um, and I think going through something at such a young age and, like, the relief that we felt when the paramedics came, mm. like, I want to go into somebody's house and then feel that about me and be there for somebody that needs them the most. And I think because of what I experienced as a child, that I can empathise more with people and understand, you know, just how horrific things and can be. And after, well, yes, and, and at 12 years, I mean, it's horrific yeah. witnessing that anyway, but yeah. at 12 years old, very traumatic. Um, but taking that call must have taken you back there a little bit because you were yeah. told how to do CPR and things for your mum. Yeah. And that has made you think, hasn't it, about your job and where mm. you want to go with it now. So what's yeah. going to happen now? Um, so I start uni in September to do my paramedic degree. So I'll do three years at uni and then I'll be a qualified paramedic. Had you always wanted to be a paramedic and just hadn't, because of your young children, yeah. got round to that and that's made you want to do it more now? Yeah, I think, I mean, my mum was a nurse, so when she used to come home and say, you know, that she'd done something today that's made a difference, I think it sort of built it in me. And then as time's gone on and when my mum passed away, I thought I need, I need to do something, you know, that I want to do. And, mm. Because I'm so determined, I've never give up and I've always just yeah. kept going. And yeah. But it is, we, we, you know, huge admiration to huge. you, but Thank it's a you. tough, tough yeah. job and it's just not as simple as it sounds no. as well. And here's what I don't understand, folks, right? According to the NHS, they say a third of paramedics have experienced violence in the past year. What's... What's that all about? What is that all about? When you're calling someone when you're in need and you need their help and you would give anything for someone to relieve your pain or whatever, mm. what do what's you think the violence is? Is all it about? Drugs, drink? Yeah, drunk, drink, dr drunk, being drunk, alcohol, you know, drugs. I just think yeah. some, sometimes when people are in situations where they don't know how to deal with things and, you know, they're angry, but... It's tell you what makes me mm -hmm. angry. The idiots who complained about, I couldn't walk down my footpath because there was an ambulance parked oh. there. Oh, no. My driveway was blocked. Yeah. I couldn't get to the supermarket because there was an ambulance there. What is it with people? You, you just think, imagine if, you know, something happened to their family members and they needed an ambulance and somebody was complaining. Or if they'd have parked down the road and, you know, it took them two more minutes to, to get to the address, somebody could have died and... I just mm. think people don't Well, we were, that. we were with a family friend once who had a heart attack and I've never been more relieved no. to see two people in green arrive you at do, the door. You do, yeah, it's got the relief that and you feel. And they were so calm and they... Were, and, and the thing is, it's not just the patient, yeah. it's the people around... Yeah, definitely. ..that you're dealing with. So it's everybody's yeah. emotions as well as, you know, yeah. caring for somebody who's very, very sick. Yeah. Uh, listen, we absolutely love the series. Ambulance starts tonight at series five. That's yeah. why it's so yeah. fantastic, so popular. BBC One at nine o'clock following yeah. the Northwest Ambulance Service. Do you know, Laura, thank Laura goodness tonight. there are people like you who oh, want to make you. a difference and thank do you. all the things that uh, you want to do there. Yeah. So thank yeah. you very thank much. You. And I hope it turns yeah, out good really, really well for you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I hope we don't have to call you for that reason. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Yeah.